UK lawmakers are once again challenging Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Just hours ago, they voted down his second bid for a snap election as Brexit chaos continues to grip the UK. And a highly controversial five-week suspension of Parliament is now taking hold. Mr Johnson was incandescent with anger over the vote and let the House know about it. Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn has also been speaking up. He told MPs his party couldn't back a general election now, not if it meant risking a no-deal exit from the EU. And here is a taste of the high drama that played out in the House of Commons. Referring to his surrender bill, he says, and I quote last week, let this bill pass and gain royal assent and then... He said, we will back an election. Well, the surrender bill, the surrender act has now passed. It has gained royal assent. He has done his level best to wreck this, chance, this country's chances of a successful negotiation. By his own logic, he must now back an election. And so, Mr Speaker, I am retabling the motion for an early date general election. I don't want election. I hope this step would be unnecessary. Yet I have accepted the reality that an election is the only way to break the deadlock in the House and to serve the national interest by giving whoever is Prime Minister the strongest possible mandate to negotiate for our country at next month's European Council. Labour, too, have accepted this reality in their own leaflets this weekend. This weekend, they say, we need a general election now. We need a general election now. That's what it says. And yet throughout the weekend, uh, the Right Honourable Gentleman's cronies, together with those of other op opposition parties, have been trying to disguise their preposterous cowardice by coming up with ever more outrageous excuses for delaying an, an election until the end of October or perhaps November or when hell freezes over. We're eager for an election. But as keen as we are, we are not prepared to risk inflicting the disaster of no deal on us, our communities, our jobs, our services, or indeed our rights. Mr Speaker, no deal would not be a clean break. It would not mean just getting on with it. It would start a whole new period of confusion and delay. The government's pretensions to negotiate are nothing but a sham. The Prime Minister knows, he knows full well, there is no mandate for no deal. No majority support for it in the country and no majority support for it in this House. But, but, but he refuses to rule it out and refuses, refuses to set out any proposals to avoid it. All right, so journalist Josh Boswell joins me now from Los Angeles. Good to have you here to sort out this mess for us. <laughs> All right, so Hi there, Prime Minister Boris Johnson lost his second bid to hold snap elections. He then suspended Parliament for five weeks and he's been told to ask the EU for an extension but refuses to do that. So what comes next? Given the bill to stop a no-deal Brexit has now become law, what are the possible scenarios going forward? Well, you've got Parliament being um, prorogued, the uh, technical term is, so shut down for the next five weeks. So we're not going to have any more action there. But Boris Johnson, um, we're hearing from, from the British media and from whispers coming from his cabinet, um, is planning various different strategies to uh, try and weasel out of, of this law that would make him delay Brexit for another three months. Um, and what, various, what could some of those strategies be, though? How, how, do, you, how do you avoid... A law. Yeah, well, 
this is you know coming from a prime minister who's who's made it his platform to um, to be the the law and order party, the party that is is going to really crack down on crime in the UK, and that's what how he'll be running um, you know this upcoming general election. Um, he has been letting it be known among the media that um, he's considering just not complying with the law, just breaking that law that Parliament passed and and refusing to go to the EU and ask for an extension. Now, what, what that would be the consequences of that of doing possible such jail for him? I mean, this may end up in uh, in the courts. Why but, would he but do I think that? that well, that's one of the less likely options. But for him, this really is, as, as he said himself, do or die. Because if he lets uh, Brexit be delayed, then his chances in the general election following that would be severely reduced. Um, it was his whole platform. I'm going to take the UK out of the EU by October 31st, come hell or high water. If he doesn't do that, he's going to lose a lot of votes to the Brexit party, most likely. And it's going to make him, it very tough for him. But there are some other more likely uh, ways that he, he will try to get out of this law. Uh, one of them is the idea that, um, so the law tells him he has to send a letter to the European Union um, and, and, and deliver it to Brussels and say, uh, I would like an extension. He uh, is considering, we're, we're told, that um, he, could, he could write another letter saying, in fact, no, the first letter um, wasn't, wasn't my real intention and, in fact, we want a no-deal Brexit. Um, now, there, there have been some analysis by by um, people very well placed to to you know consider this a, a, a former Supreme Court judge who who said that he thinks this would be um, clearly breaking that law that Parliament passed but it is a strategy that Boris is considering and again this is um, something that, that I think will end up in the courts eventually You're right um, of course there, Right, sorry, you wanted another strategy, yeah? <laughs> uh, yes, he's, he's got several up his sleeve, apparently 20 or more that, um, that they're considering right now. Um, one of the other uh, options is to get one of the EU member states to veto any delay to, the, um, to Brexit. So all the EU member states need to um, sign up to it. He goes and, and could ask for an extension, as the law tells him to, but then he could also do a side deal perhaps with, with Poland or a, a country like that who, who um, you know, has considered it in the past. Um, who would then veto uh, the the European Union um, signing up to that extension, and that would then force a no-deal Brexit. Right, and of course, so of we're talk talking about eight weeks, though, uh, to come yes. up with some sort of, sort of solution to negotiate uh, a possible new deal, although he doesn't seem on board for that, and the French are signalling they might not give an extension. But again, of course, as we mentioned, Johnson doesn't really want one anyway. So how likely is it that uh, France or Johnson will blink first? Because presumably this is part of the strategy as well, sort of pushing everyone to the edge. Yeah, that's right. And I, I think I think France ultimately will l let an extension go forward. If, if Boris Johnson does come to the European Union and says, all right, Parliament's made me ask for this extension. I don't think France is going to get in, in his way because the European Union doesn't want um, no deal because that would be um, pretty catastrophic for them as well in terms of trade and the friction and, and the chaos that would ensue from that. But also, they don't want the blame for no deal. And it would be very easy for Boris Johnson, for, for anybody in the UK, to point to uh, you know, France vetoing it or, or refusing to, to sign up to this delay and saying, ah, well, we would, we would have got it, but, but it's the European Union's fault. It's France's fault. No one wants the blame assigned to them. So there is this kind of game of chicken somewhat. But, you know, the, the game of chicken has shifted a lot from, from a, even a week ago because, you know, a week ago the, the legal default was we are leaving the European Union um, on October 31st and now the legal default is, as long as Boris Johnson doesn't wriggle out of it, we're going to have to stay for another three more months. It's a breathtaking mess, really, isn't it? Uh, Josh Boswell, really thank you so much for sorting through this and looking at all of those possible strategies. We shall see. We'll keep watching this. Many thanks. Thanks, Rosemary.